it's been 60 minutes now, so let's go ahead and pull some more window panes and see how our dough's doing. We'll go ahead and start with the pastry flour again. You can see this time the window pane's stronger for the pastry flour. It still has a crepey feel to it. You can feel, just by touching it and looking at it, you can see the graininess. You can feel that it's weak. But it's doing really well for a pastry flour. You can pull it pretty good. And so it's also nicely extensible. That means stretchy. So that's our pastry flour after one hour. Now we'll try our all-purpose flour. This is stronger than the pastry flour, but I can feel that it's still weak. You can see the crepey graininess in this as well, but it's not as pronounced as the pastry flour. It's pretty strong. It will it'll be great for lots of different types of baked things. You can see how nicely stretchy that is. Okay, now we'll do the gold metal bread flour. This is uh, stronger. It hasn't torn yet. It's, I can pull a nice window pane. It's strong. That'll make some great bread. So and you can see how nicely stretchy this dough is. It's called extensible, nice and stretchy. It makes a nice ball. It's no longer sticking to my fingers too much. It's pretty good. And let's check those other ones. The pastry flour. It feels wetter. It feels more sticky. It's actually adhering to my fingers. It's not as dry uh, of a ball. As a matter of fact, it made a mess on my fingers. I had to go wash my hands because they were just too sticky from handling the pastry flour. So this is the gold medal all-purpose. It's just a little bit sticky. I can also form it into a nice ball. It has a nice silky texture to it. So, and it's, it's not too bad really. And here's the more bread flour. We'll see how, what kind of a window pane we can stretch. This is a really strong dough. This would be, be great for making bagels, for adding whole wheat to, and like I said, whenever you want to add a lot of things to a dough or laminate the dough, or if you want to put lots of chopped raisins and nuts and seeds and things, then using a strong bread flour will help the dough keep its strength. All of those additions will weaken your gluten. So this type of dough is good if you want to do a long auto lease. You can use a really nice strong flour like this for long fermentation breads, the San Francisco style breads, the extreme fermentation, the do nothing overnight breads. You can almost see through it. It's a really nice window pane and it makes a nice ball. Doesn't really stick. Nice dry. So our test is finished. We have the stickier pastry flour, which is good for pastries and cakes and muffins and anything like that where you don't need a really strong gluten because you don't want it tough. This will make tender baked goods. So that's good for anything you want tender. The bread flours, this one, which is really strong, and this one, which is really strong, are really good for, for bread and for any type of baked good which is needs a really strong gluten like bagels or pizzas 
and it also will hold a lot of ingredients and and still stay strong so this is really good when you need to add things to your bread including when you want to add a lot of whole grains and the all-purpose flour is really good for everything in between it is nice for cakes and breads and everything as a matter of fact sometimes these types of bread flours are so strong that they need an auto lease or they need to be mixed with another flour like I don't actually usually make separate doughs and mix them but during mixing I'll use half bread flour half all-purpose flour it's almost like a mini auto lease you uh, add some uh, weaker dough and it helps the strong dough so that it's more stretchy and extensible and not so tough and then you will also have a slightly more open crumb and you won't have a real tough crust and a lot of the artisan bread flours, the specialty flours, will have a slightly lower gluten just so that you have the better extensibility. So don't forget that with all of these flours, you have tools to help you either make them more extensible or to make them less extensible. For instance, when you first mix up an all-purpose flour here, if you want it to be a little bit stronger, then you don't do an auto lease at all. You add the salt right at mixing, and that will help keep the gluten stronger. If you want to make the gluten less tough and more extensible, you do an auto lease and add the salt later. And so you can see by this test that you decide how strong the gluten is and what tools you want to use to help you have the outcome in the bread that you want to have. So this test should help you figure out what your flour can do. Next time you pick up a bag of flour and you're not sure of what the protein content or the quality is, try out this test and it will give you an idea of whether you should make bread with it or maybe some muffins, waffles, or pancakes instead. See you next time.